What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be previewing the huge Geelong Collingwood clash up at Optus Stadium. Uh, it's going to be a doozy. So let's run that intro, jump straight into it. Just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on Twitch. It's Swoop Luke, uh, streaming FIFA at the moment, but there's room for other games if they're not uh, Fortnite. Uh, also, follow me on Instagram, at Swoop Luke, posting, you know, daily, like, more than daily. Uh, and you can have better interaction with me over there. And follow me on TikTok before it gets cancelled. Uh, that's Swoop Luke as well. But, anyway, let's just jump straight into this preview. So Geelong's form going into this game has been pretty outstanding. They've won their last three games, a convincing win against uh, Premiership favourites, the Lions, the week before they um, smashed the Suns, and the week before that they just beat uh, a good uh, Melbourne side. They've only dropped two games for the season, currently sitting in second place. They're a good attacking side, you know, uh, better attacking side than we are at the moment, and you know they're they're okay defensively uh, as well. You you know that's why they're second with their uh, 125 or so percentage. Patrick Dangerfield has been starring for them. Of course, it's the usual culprits. You know, uh, Ablett, uh, Selwood, Dangerfield, all those sort of guys just always swarming, always around the ball, and you can see why they're in the position that they're in. They are a good football side, but we're hoping to knock them off the perch when we versed them in Perth. Last week, they put 11 goals past Brisbane, seven of those coming in the third quarter, uh, when Brisbane, you know, they looked to have the game on their terms until that third quarter came, and obviously Geelong surged in that last half, and, you know, Brisbane were just pretty much left for dead uh, up there. So... We do have to be careful for a lot of their players, you know, especially Hawkins. He always plays well against us. I uh, played well, kicked three goals last week. And they've got, you know, a couple of new guys as well, you know, like uh, Sam Simpson. He's a bit of a disposal getter. Doesn't use it well, but is another guy that we can look out for. So, on to us. We had a very, very, very good win against Hawthorne, you know, we kept them to their lowest margin against, mm, we kept them to their lowest score while Alistair Clarkson has been coaching him for, you know, over 300 games or however long he's been coaching him. So, you know, our defense is impeccable. Put five goals on the board in the first quarter, kick three goals for the rest of the game. So, that's how our form has been these last couple of weeks. Beating Hawthorne, losing to Essendon convincingly, and, you know, we should have beat the Giants, but we didn't, and we lost to the Giants, but smashed the Saints the week before. So it's a little bit of a roller coaster at the moment, the Pies. But they showed last week that they can play with a little bit of excitement. They can use the ball better. They just need to find uh, more avenues to go. And, you know, we can be put in that premiership contention. So the last time we met that amazing qualifying final last year, we just came out of the blocks Hit them hard. You know, Adams ended up kicking two for the game. Elliot kicked two for the game. Brody Grundy had a, an amazing game. But, you know, in saying that, we only ended up winning that game by 10 points. I'm not, you know, um, disparaging such a good win because it was a fantastic win by the boys to come out of the blocks that hard against a Geelong side that I think they were going in favourites into that uh, game. Also, we lost to Goey in the second quarter. We lost Greenwood, um, I think, in the second quarter as well. So we were two guys down. Didn't score a goal in the fourth quarter, and I think that's a little bit where our problems have started, um, you know, with not scoring goals, but that's another story for another day. Sidebottom absolutely smashed that game, over 30 disposals, 5 tackles, 15 marks, was absolutely doing everything, kicked a nice goal as well. You can see that we're definitely going to miss him on uh, Thursday night, uh, because He's just he just brings that finesse and that elegance to our um, football team when he's in the side. These key areas of matchups that I'm going to be talking about are really simple things. The first one being that we need to find ways to kick goals. I talked about it in my five things that we learned from the Hawthorne game. I talked about it in my review. Be talking about it all year. You, it's hard to win games when you don't score goals. And that's obviously, like, obviously, Luke, you need to score goals to win games. Yes, but 
we went through the Giants game without scoring a goal for like a quarter or two. Essendon game, we went the second and third quarter without scoring a goal. Against Hawthorne, we scored one goal in the second, third and fourth quarter after a five goal opening term. We can't bring that sort of scoring to a game against Geelong, who are a better side, will put you to, you know, the sword, a good counter-attacking side, if you don't score goals. You know, we can't have another great first quarter, and then score one goal in the second, and then no goals in the second half, or one goal in the second, third, and fourth quarter. Just doesn't work like that. You know, our defense could be impeccable, but against the Geelong side with Dangerfield, Adler, Salwood, Menangola, uh, Hawkins, Simpson, all these sort of guys, they're all going to they're like Hydra. You, you chop one down, another guy um, pops up. You know, Hawthorne didn't have that last week, and Geelong are going to. So we definitely need our forwards to start scoring goals. Um, it's all about delivery in there. And it's going to be a very, very, very wet day. So uh, we play so well in the wet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And that's another thing that I want to talk about. Key area is going to be how we adapt to the rain. You think going up to Perth it'll be sunny and you know 35 degrees, but it's going to be pouring down on Thursday night, and you know that we don't play well in the rain. We proved that in the prelim last year against the Giants. Proved that again against I think it was uh, Essendon was raining a little bit, and then the week before against the Giants. So we're not a very good wet weather side anymore. If we stay with the tall forward line, we stay with Cox. It's all about our crummers, and if they can get to the ground. Um, at the right time if Cox is not going to take, you know, a mark in the game. A big key area as well is how we can nullify the influence of their midfielders. You know, we did it well uh, last season against Patrick Dangerfield and stuff. Who's it going to be this time? Do you sacrifice someone's game to tag? We don't play taggers, you know. I'd love Levi Greenwood to be out there, but he's not going to be out there. Do you sacrifice like a Phillips or something or, you know, like a Pendlebury, what he did to Crip? Do you play him directly on Dangerfield to kind of nullify that influence, but then you lose Pendlebury's influence, you know, for 50% of the game or whatever it may be? I think that stopping Dangerfield is the key to stopping uh, this Geelong side. So, ins and outs. We know that Kelly is coming out, unfortunately, with that uh, fracture in his elbow requiring surgery. So, you would think that Togoi comes straight into this side. We know he's a pure talent. Yes, he's had um, more downs than he has had ups this season. That could be because of that um, assault charge and that was weighing in on him. Maybe now he hasn't played for about 10 days, maybe two weeks close to. So maybe that kind of gives him that fire in his belly. He doesn't have that weight on his shoulders anymore and he can come out, hit it hard and he's a goalie that we know and we love. Hopefully, mainly in the forward line. But in saying that, we talked about the wet just before. Do we persist with Cox? He hasn't had a good season. He's been out of form. You know, do we... We, do we go? Do we keep going tall? It didn't work for us in the prelim last year when it was pouring down and we knew it was going to be raining. So do we take out Cox and bring in Cameron, who's pretty much just a like-for-like like in the sense that they're tall? Or do we take out Coxie and bring in someone smaller around the ball like a Dacos or like a Sire or even a Josh Thomas in the forward line? I think what we are going to win is going to be a gross, low-scoring affair. I think we'll only win by, you know, four or five points. And I feel like my big call will be that Jordan Degoy does come back and kicks three, and he kicks the match winner. Uh, that's a huge call because we know how he's been, but that is my big call. Look, Swoopers, that has been my preview of the game. Let me know your thoughts down below. Obviously, I always love to listen to them. Uh, hit me up on Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, whatever your social media platform may be. But in the meantime, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, Double Shackers, I'll sweep you later. Against a side like Geelong, or one goal for three quarters, one goal in every three quarters. Ah, oh, shit. If we bring what we brought uh, last week against Hawthorne, scoring role, <clears throat> if we bring what we brought last week, uh, scoring, oh fuck me.